Hello there. In this video, we're going to find the center of mass of an equilateral triangle, and we're going to show how you can, you know, use geometric techniques to avoid doing integrations for center of mass calculations. Okay, so first let's go ahead and talk a little bit about uniformly dense objects just in general. So go ahead and consider that I have some arbitrary blob, I'm calling it B, and it has some mass M, and all that we know is that it has a uniform density rho, right? And in this picture I've went ahead and set us up here, we can break this blob B into a bunch of infinitesimal mass elements of mass dm, right, and point to them with position vectors r. Right, so we know that my center of mass, r, of my blob is defined as the integral over my blob of this vector r, dm, divided by the total mass of my blob m, right? And of course, we can very quickly rewrite m here as the integral of dm over my blob, or in other words, summing together all of the little infinitesimal mass elements to, you know, come up with the total mass of the blob, right? And we know that we can very quickly rewrite dm as, or whoops, dm as equal to the mass density rho times each infinitesimal volume element that the infinitesimal masses occupy, right? So let's go ahead and just substitute that right into our little equation here. So we have integral over my blob of r times rho dv divided by integral of rho dv over my blob but rho is just a constant so we could pull both of these rows out of the integrals or in other words we could just cancel both of these guys out right in which case we're left with this form integral over my blob of r dv over integral of dv just adding together all my volume elements oh right that's just the total volume of my blob v right and this equation that we have here this is a very general expression for finding the centroid of a volume in 3D space. And of course, you know, we would derive the same thing if we were integrating over an area or like a 2D object, right? Um, but we have this integral form of a centroid, right? Popping out if we assume if we just assume one thing that our object has a uniform mass density right right or in other words with just a couple of lines here we've come up with right we've come up with this kind of leap here that we started with this purely physics definition of having a center of mass and then under this constraint that we have the a, a uniform mass density for our object we've come up with this purely geometric definition which is that the center of mass becomes the same as the centroid of your object. And now once we're in this geometry world, well in geometry there are plenty of ways that you can find centroids of different types of shapes, you know, without ever touching integrals, right? So that's great, that's gonna make our life a lot easier. All right, so now let's consider having an equilateral triangle here, right? And we know that it has, you know, a uniform mass density, area mass density we denote with sigma. And now forget me telling you that it has mass, right? I don't need to tell you what the total mass is. As long as we know that this triangle has a uniform mass density, we know that this is purely a geometry question now. We just need to find the centroid of this triangle. Okay, great. Or in other words, in geometry, if I take three medians, right, of my triangle, they're going to intersect at the centroid, which we now know is the center of mass of this triangle. So we just have to figure out what this point is now, right? Right. And so, of course, the first thing that we can see is that the X position of the center of mass is just going to be zero. Right. And you could have also argued that with symmetry. Right. So really, we're just interested in finding this height here, the height of my centroid. Right. So let's focus on just one of the triangles here that we've made by, you know, with these intersecting medians, right? So for example, we know that this length here is just going to be L over two. We just bisected this line, right? And so we, what's this angle going to be? Well, if the total angle is, you know, 60 degrees in an equilateral triangle between two legs, then this guy here is just gonna be cut in half. This is 30 degrees. Okay, so let's go ahead and just find with some simple trig, what is this height H here, right? Right, just really quick geometry. 
So Katoa, right, if we take the tangent of 30 degrees, we're going to have h over l over 2, or in other words, my height h is equal to l over 2 tangent of 30 degrees, right? And you could either have this, you know, this tangent memorized, or maybe you need the extra step. You could write this as sine of 30 degrees over cosine of 30 degrees. And sine of 30 degrees is gonna be one half. Cosine of 30 degrees is going to be root three over two, right? So now we just take this ratio here, and we have L over two times one half over root three over two. This guy here is gonna cancel here. We have just L over two root three. And there we go, now we've just shown that the center of mass of my, you know, my equilateral triangle is at x equals zero and y is equal to l over two root three, right? And we skipped out on doing, you know, an integral over this triangle, right? We skipped out on doing any form of integration of this triangle, which is excellent. You know, we love when we get to cut down on our work. All right, so keep that in mind that for uniform objects, you can calculate the center of mass just by finding the centroid, and that can cut down your work a bunch. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. If you enjoyed this video, found it helpful, let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel. I love to hear about people getting on board. But other than that, thank you so, so much for watching.